Yeah. Sustainable Living Series. Um, today we're going to be talking about waste. Um, really excited. This is one of my favorite. Darn excited. Um, so it's, I'm fun. To, I'm excited to um, a quick little poll. Um, I guess I should introduce myself. So my name is Cassie Hage. I'm the Assistant Director of the Office of Sustainability um, and um, Office of Sustainability is hosting the Sustainable Living Series. So again, welcome. Um, all right, so I want to get to know a little bit about the audience before we get started. So I'm going to launch a couple polls um, to give us a sense of um, who, who we are in, in uh, the virtual space there. So please go ahead and let us know who you're with, who you are. All right, so equal split of student person. Appreciate you being here. Let's see. There are the results. If you guys want to see that. All right. <clears throat> situation. So are you by the St. Louis area? See you uh, next week or so. Take care. Don't forget your chicken wings. Okay, we've got a handful of people living on campus. Uh, most of the people are going to campus occasionally. Um, we've got a handful of people who are outside of St. Louis. Yes, see, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so unfortunately, you're, you're breaking up quite a bit. Um, someone is suggesting to turn off your VPN if that's something you're using. Um, and you can also turn off your video, even though we will miss seeing your face, but we'd rather hear what you have to say. Well, I will start by uh, trying, but please, um, yeah, let me know if you can't hear me. And I'm gonna I'm just pull up one more poll here. Where did I find this one thing? It, can I take it out? This black thing at Mary Beth's. Right. So um I don't think so. That at the bank. Which would um, best describe you? Are you a novice just getting started on your waste knowledge? Are you in the middle of the pack? Um, or an expert, you're, you're the person that people go to. All right. Interesting. Okay, it looks like most people are middle of the pack. Great, well, we will um, hope to move you all over to the expert category after the presentation today. Um, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so our goals for today are to, um, to share some hacks on how to reduce waste, especially in the new COVID era where there's a lot of extra waste being produced um, through strategies of sharing and reuse. Um, we're going to talk about some new university programs that we want you all to be aware of, and then also we'll review those waste sorting concepts so that if there's anything you're rusty on, you'll know by the end of this presentation of where it goes. Um, 
oops, is that out of order? So, okay. So um, probably most of the folks on the call have some sense of, um, of the uh, people that Americans in particular throw away. Um, this is actually an old slide, so my guess is this has increased since, um, since COVID has um, you shifted everything so dramatically. Um, and basically all of the waste that we're producing um, can be reduced significantly through thoughtful consumption and um, alternative ways of um, reusing and disposing. Um, there's this additional emphasis on single use plastics. I, I myself took um, a, the plastic footprint quiz and I'm embarrassed to share the results, even though I consider myself to be um, pretty diligent in this area, I still have um, a significantly higher impact than um, the average European or Indian, um, but a bit lower than the average American. So that's something that you can um, take to kind of baseline and learn some opportunities for improvement. And as I mentioned in the COVID era, we are seeing, seeing an increase in single-use plastics from PPE to um, carry out um, and just an overabundance of caution around um, potential exposures, many of which are um, have been um, determined to be pretty low risk. So um, we can go into that in a little bit. Um, so there's this question of why should we care? Um, the, I think one of the ways to contextualize the importance of um, waste reduction and recycling is through this lens of climate change. Um, I'm sure you all have heard plenty about climate change in the news with um, the forest fires and the hurricanes um, coming on opposite ends of the country and um, the impact that we will be continuing to see over the next um, decade. Um, but a lot of these um, uh, uh, climate change is closely tied to waste in a couple of different key ways. So um, every time we're able to reduce waste, we are um, reducing all the associated emissions from the life cycle of that item, whether it's transporting the item for sale, um, the raw materials that are extracted, um, anything that's emitted when it's, um, when it's disposed of, we're, we're basically cutting all of that out of the equation. So waste reduction is super important. Um, recycling also reduces carbon emissions and composting is a really key strategy because it eliminates the methane um, that's produced with landfills um, when organics are in the landfills. And methane is 84 times more potent than carbon dioxide, so it's really important to manage for that. <coughs> um, so <coughs> the solutions that we're looking at are um, going back, back to basics, reduce, reuse, and recycle. And we're going to start out with the top of that hierarchy of reducing our waste. <coughs> So wash use waste, is, um, you know, as a community, this is individuals and it's also institutional waste. And um, that can be subdivided into different categories, things that go to landfill and things that are diverted. And then of the items that are diverted, we have a number of different ways that uh, those um, go to be repurposed or recycled rather than landfill. And the key thing that, uh, that we want to emphasize is um, reducing that number overall. So the key strategy is going to be how can we get that 16 million pounds lower, especially when you factor in the growth of the, the university. Um, and at the same time, we're looking to increase the diversion um, through better um, recycling, better collection, um, and also um, a wider variety of collections as well. And that's going to end up reducing our landfill and letting us get closer to zero waste. <clears throat> and of course, the same concepts can be applied in, in on an individual basis. 
So one really key strategy for this is the sharing economy. Um, so we recently put out a, um, a resource that um, is available through our website and we can send out as a follow up. Um, but it's, it's basically aggregating all of the different programs across WashU um, and some beyond WashU in the St. Louis community that, um, that enable people to share before buying their own. Um, so some examples of this, you know, basic one would be the library. Um, lots of different things you can um, rent and borrow through the library. Um, there are different ways that you can um, uh, go through clothing. So through um, whether it's through secondhand shops or uh, an organization like Swap on WashU's campus. Um, and then there are tools like um, we launched it as Reapley, but it's brand WashU branded as WashU Reuse, and that's a platform online platform where you can post things um, like lab equipment if you know, no longer need them um, and then someone else across the university can um, can identify a need or can um, ask for that item and then they don't have to buy it. So that's going to be reducing the need to store things, maintain them, um, and the waste associated as well. So lots of different um, things that you might not have thought of um, for sharing rather than buying your own. Um, some of the other photos here include um, these bike fix it stations that are across campus. So if you don't have to have your own bike tools, um, printers of work printers are really, really good to avoid having an printer and all the waste and energy program. And then those green plates are greenware, um, which aren't available at the moment um, due to COVID, but will be available for use at events um, when COVID operations uh, shift back to normal. Um, so then another thing that we want to focus on is dining. Um, there, there are quite a few changes that, are, um, uh, that have been underway. And if you've been going to campus, you might have observed some of these. but. Um, this is a very like, tangible and visible way that um, there's just going to be more waste in our lives unless we're pretty intentional about um, saying no. So we're going to go over each of these different items um, in more detail, um, but we do have kind of a comprehensive messaging campaign and these graphics are available. <clears throat> So first um, key message would be the emphasis on reusing by bringing your own. Um, so if you're able to provide your own reusable utensils, um, you could save as many as 1500 plastic forks, knives, spoons, and straws over the course of a year of the year. So that becomes a great strategy. And then of course, bring your own water bottle. Um, we, we know that um, during COVID operations on campus, um, there will not be any reusable silverware. All of the plasticware will be disposable, and, um, and much of it's also going to be wrapped in plastic. So the way to avoid that is going to be through bringing your own. Straws are going to be um, still only available upon request, so that's a good policy that we um, uh, implemented last year and will continue through. Um, and then we also know that there isn't going to be any fountain drink option or, you know, going away for the moment, um, but we do fully anticipate that they'll return once the um, COVID precautions have lifted. Um, so one of the uh, easy ways to um, jumpstart your bringing your own um, behaviors is to with um, silverware that you have around the house really easy to just package it up and bring it with you <coughs> um, but we do have these bamboo um, travel cutlery sets and actually one of the benefits of you attending this workshop is that um, you can get a free one for, you can qualify for um, one of these free um, utensil sets that includes fork, knife, spoon, and um, a straw and straw cleaner. So typically they're available for purchase through our website. Um, we are having them um, for free for all students who request them. Um, but like I said, if you're not a student and still are interested in, in one of these um, 
connect with us afterwards and we can get you one. Um, so another key message is going to be emphasizing reusables. Um, so once um, sit-in dining does return, um, which we anticipate in the next couple of weeks, um, if it's not already happening, um, of course it will be limited, but um, if you are going to eat in one of the dining halls where it's available, um, please do ask for a plate. Uh, that is the, the best first option. And then the second is um, eco to go So if you've been on campus for a while, you might have heard of this program. Um, it's back and it's way, way bigger than before. Um, so these are free reusable to-go boxes that are available at four locations on the Danforth campus. Um, you basically request it when you're ordering, whether you're in person or mobile. Um, you eat your food and then you empty and return it at any of the return locations. And we're asking that people do that um, within 24 hours or so, so that they can be sterilized and put back into circulation. <clears throat> it's important to mention that um, this, while this is a wonderful program, there are some, um, some vulnerabilities. So one is there's no accountability measure. So if you take one of these containers out and don't return it, um, nobody is gonna know. Um, but if we deplete the, the stash, then of course the program won't be um, able to continue. These eco to go boxes can be used up to a thousand times um, before needing to be replaced. So that, that um, is obviously going to displace a lot of the disposable to go boxes. Um, but in order to offset the, the life cycle of one of these boxes, it has to be used at least 30 times. So if someone takes one, um, and then, you know, recycles it or throws it away or forgets about it, um, it's really going to um, offset the, any environmental benefit. These boxes are also expensive. Of course, if you're getting that, you know, 30, 100,000 uses, it's, um, you're going to save plenty of money over time. Um, but if they don't get returned again, it's, it's not going to... Um, Um, but these boxes, the boxes don't get soggy and they can be used over and over again. So we really want to encourage people to try this out and um, ask for these. So these are available at, um, so you can request these at the village, the dock, Bears Den, and Parkside. Um, and you can return them at any location, also um, whispers and grounds for change. Um, so to sum, sum that up, when you're thinking about dining out, again, this is much of this is specific to WashU's campus, but you can apply in other areas. Bring your own use. Um, the, the other nice thing about this is it's, it's safer. You know where your napkin has been, you know where your utensil set has been, so you don't have to worry about potential exposure to um, disposable items that have been handled by um, others or um, out for others. Um, bring your own water bottle and drink more water. So um, try to avoid those single use plastic containers um, by just shifting more of your consumption towards water. If you're gonna have coffee, um, try to make it at home and bring it so you're not using one of those disposable cups. Um, or potentially petition to get a coffee maker um, at the office or um, identify places across campus where you might be able to make your own. Um, you can avoid the bulk condiments, uh, I'm sorry, the um, individual condiments by um, having your own on hand. So if you know you're gonna go back to the office or go back to your room, um, you can just keep a bottle of ketchup Um, and then also request the eco to go or dish. And then a side note um, for really with uh, dining, also consider opting for things, plan for menu items, um, and avoid um, impacts. <clears throat> so now we're going to 
we're recycling. So good strategy um, at the at the end of that cycle. <clears throat> Recycling is a it's much more responsible way to utilize natural resources, closes the loop, it reduces those greenhouse gas emissions that I mentioned at the beginning, it creates jobs and diverse waste from landfills. It's in the St. Louis um, region. All of the recycling um, entities are taking these items for local processing. a lot in the news about um, and while that is a challenge in some areas um, in our region there really is a strong uh, market so those things are getting recycled I'd be happy about that at the end wash you with that um, I'm sorry, hold on for just a minute. Hi everyone. Um, so I'm guessing you are also experiencing here in Cassie filling up a little bit. Um, should we keep going? I feel like we can hear most of it, um, but um, feel free to share uh, thoughts in the chat. All right, keep keep going, Cassie. I think okay. the votes are are behind you, <laughs> and awesome. the slides the slides are so pretty um, uh, self explanatory. So, okay, is um, we've got two different streams, pretty much anywhere. Um, Uh, let's see, so most of the dining areas do pre-consumer, so before um, anyone, so essentially the kitchen waste, um, food scraps and whatnot, um, so that's happening pretty much across campus, um, but then there are a handful of areas, Bears Den, the Village, the Duck, Partside, um, where um, you as, as um, consumers are able to do um, composting. <clears throat> And it, it does require slightly different approaches for each of those. Um, so it helps a little bit to think about where our waste is going. Um, so when we, when we identify that it's not just going to the landfill, it's not just being dumped in one space, but to actually think about the end uses that can kind of help understand both how we sort and also um, create greater energy and excitement about, um, about doing that sorting. So for that single stream recycling, that's going through a vendor called Waste Connections, and they have um, they work with a local processor named Federal, um, but they also have a handful of other material recycling facilities that are sorting the materials and selling them to those um, local processors throughout the region. Um, so they're again breaking these things down into bales of cardboard, um, plastics, aluminum, etc. Then with compost, um, those are all being, uh, it's being transported through Total Organics, which is actually um, a, a business arm of St. Louis Composting. And then St. Louis Composting is the actual facility where the items are composted. And these are industrial scale sites. Um, they have a couple throughout the region. And then WashU is actually a, a customer of St. Louis Composting and we buy their mulch and their, um, their compost um, back to use in landscaping. And then 
um, you know, individuals and other um, large um, large campuses are able to, to buy those items as well. So it's a really nice local full cycle circle there. We work with a lot of different stakeholders to make this um, waste reduction and sorting happen. So I just threw this up as a um, example to, to um, give you an idea of all the different stakeholders that we are educating and working with logistics on through this system. Um, the goal for our 2020 plan is to achieve a 55% diversion rate on the Danforth campus. Um, <laughs> things are definitely up here. Um, COVID is definitely challenging this goal because we're lower density but higher um, disposables. So we're, we haven't quite figured out how we're gonna um, identify if we've achieved this goal or not. But that's that's at least where we were. That's the goal post. We've seen some really positive trends over the past um, handful of years. So um, after single stream was um, was introduced, we saw a huge increase in recycling. There was a period in 2016 um, where we saw a lot of um, rejected loads of recycling, but we were able to address that by working at key points throughout the system. And then we sig saw significant reduction in those rejected loads. And in 2019, we actually didn't have any rejected loads of recycling. So that was really positive um, on our end. And then with, um, with composting as well, um, composting um, typically has a lower threshold for contamination. Um, and we've seen that drop off um, significantly as well. And then we've also increased our compost collection, um, the different collection points and also the volume overall. And we've been really pleased to see the dramatic increase in the materials we've been able to, um, to compost. Um, so this is the refresher of course on what can be recycled. We've got um, these signs up across campus. Um, there are outdated signs out there that say when in doubt, recycle. We really wanna flip that to um, when in doubt, leave it out. Um, so this, I would advise kind of go with your gut. If you're, if you're not certain that it can be recycled, um, go ahead and put it in landfill. Um, but some of the, the basics that can be recycled, um, metals, glass, containers, so things like um, uh, whether it's a milk carton or um, a, um, a soda bottle or a can, an aluminum can, like any of those containers, um, lend themselves very well to the, the sorting systems that we've developed for recycling. And then most papers, um, anything that tears for the most part can be recycled. There are some exceptions, but for the most part, um, you know, paper products can be recycled. And then the key things that we want to make sure people know to leave out are going to be um, food soil products um, or if things have um, liquid or ice, you're going to want to either remove those or um, leave those items out. Um, paper cups do you have a lining uh, and to go bowls as well, those paper to go bowls. Um, they've got a lining in there that's plastic and can't be separated during the um, recycling process. So those need to stay out. And then looking for the number six plastics as well, and um, which I'll, I'll go into in more detail in just a moment. Um, and plastic bags, any sort of plastic wrap are things that we really want to keep out of recycling. So there's some key concepts that can help you um, uh, identify whether or not something can go into recycling. And I think by addressing those at kind of a, a larger scale, um, it'll be easier for, for you to identify if something very specific should go into recycling or should be um, go into a special recycling stream or someplace else altogether. Um, so one of the, the first key concept is avoiding the, the four T's. So things that are really small are going to get lost in the in the mechanized sorting system. Typically, you can leave, leave those out. Tanglers are ones that um, aren't super common, but they're really, really problematic in the, in the mechanized sorting system. So when we talk to recyclers, this is what they say they want our messaging to focus on. Leave out the plastic bags, leave out the film, 
you've got the bubble wrap, anything that's, um, that's gonna get tangled up in the machinery should really um, stay out of the single stream recycling. Um, tech things have, um, have different ways of recycling um, out, outside of single stream. So while they are very recyclable, and we'll talk about some ways to recycle those items, they should not be going into single stream recycling. And the same thing with textiles, very recyclable, but not through your single stream recycling system. Um, so those are gonna be um, things that we recycle in special collections. Um, so another key concept is this idea of reading the labels and, and being able to kind of decode uh, what they're telling you. So this number that appears in the, in the ch chasing triangles is gonna tell you the chemical makeup of that material. Um, it doesn't tell you whether or not it can be recycled in, in your area. And this could differ substantially based on where you are in the country. Um, but typically number ones and number twos are really good, high value um, recyclable plastics. So if you have any choice, like for example with cups, if you're choosing between a number six plastic cup and a number one, the number one is gonna be uh, the preferred um, material. Um, number three, you don't see much of, but it's not a great plastic that, because uh, it has the vinyl chloride in there. Um, number four, there's a lot of um, soft plastics are number four. So again, it's a recyclable plastic, but not in single stream. So if you see a number four on a soft plastic, again, it's probably recyclable, but not in your single stream. Um, another confusing one is the compostable plastics. So um, if, as you can see on the right, uh, those, the number seven is, means other. So PLA, if it's seven PLA, that's a compostable um, plastic and it can be, um, composted but not recycled. Um, and then I also want to give a shout out to this how to recycle labeling. Um, a lot of big manufacturers are using these um, and they're really useful in telling you exactly um, whether or not something can be recycled or how it can be recycled. So um, take a look, look at those. Um, and here's one close up. It really does go into um, all the specifics, especially if you have a mixed material item. So I saw one on a Q-tip box, which explained the paper portion of it could be separated and recycled. Um, the plastic portion um, had to be landfilled. Um, and, uh, and so it just kind of you know, broke it down for me, which was really helpful. Um, and I also find that it's, it's you could, um, support the brands that are using this type of um, labeling to kind of, you know, vote with your dollar per se. Um, and then the final key concept with recycling is avoiding wish cycling. So this is, you know, just because you feel like you really want something to be recyclable and it um, makes you uncomfortable to throw it away, um, it probably means that um, you can either you know, shift your buying and, and not buy that item, or, you know, you have to come to terms with throwing it in the landfill, because it really can cause more problems if you put it in a single stream. <clears throat> so with composting, um, the, the key things to remember here are um, pretty much any type of food um, can go into an industrial composting, which is what we're doing on WashU's campus. This isn't backyard composting, which has somewhat different rules. So things like bones and meats and salad dressing and all that stuff is fine to go in compost. The paper to go boxes are fine to go in compost. Um, the occasional um, compostable plastic that you'll find on campus can also go into this compost. And then most of these brown, unbleached paper products, particularly napkins, um, are something that you would encounter quite a bit on our campus. So if you mainly just think food, paper to go boxes, and napkins, that covers 99.9% .9 of what you would be composting on campus. And this is an example of, of the windrows that are used to, to compost um, our, our waste. 
it's mixed in with landscape waste and turned and, and monitored so everything gets to a high enough heat to really cook off and decompose um, which is why they can take things like meat um, in, in this industrial composting system. <clears throat> So finally, I do want to do a shout out for the, the South 40 um, residential compost program. Um, so this is something started by students. Um, it's available for um, anyone who's living on the South 40. They can request a compost bucket and use that to collect their um, the compost that they're bringing to their room, um, food waste, to-go boxes, and then there are collection points throughout the residential halls. Um, so if, if you if you qualify for that, if you're a resident, please um, look out for that program and spread the word to um, particularly the first year students who um, might be interested in that. <clears throat> and then just a handful of, of reminders about the importance of sorting out items. So, um, you know, we have after you have a meal at WashU in, you know, a to go container. It's just going to be really important to not close that clamshell and throw it away, whether it's in the compost or landfill. It's really about opening up, quickly pulling out the items that need to go um, to the landfill and then composting the rest and being, being mindful about that. <clears throat> um, and then, of course, if you're using these reusables, um, you're going to um, compost if you can, the apple, you know, the food waste and the napkin. Um, if compost isn't available and you don't want to hold on to your eco to go until you come to a compost area, those items need to be landfill. It's important um, to note that recycling isn't just kind of the, the next tier down of what you could do. And so therefore, if composting isn't available, recycle it. It's really uh, thinking about what goes in recycling, what goes in compost, and if compost isn't available, um, throw those items out. Um, all right, so just quick review on the key messages. Um, clean, empty, and dry. If in doubt, leave it out. Number six, plastics. Number six, mix. Um, no plastic bags or, or utensils go into the recycling. Avoid the four T's consume less in general and pass it on. Um, so I do have a quiz, but I think I'm going to actually open it up to questions um, because I know people really tend to have come to these with very specific questions in mind. Um, so either you can throw your questions up in the chat. I think um, Eric, uh, Clara's been monitoring the chat a little bit, or you're welcome to hop off mute and ask your question. Um, Cassie, one of the questions earlier uh, from Anita was, is there anything offered at the medical campus? Um, and I'm wondering if it's specific to reusable items or, or in general. It was asked pretty early on, so I'm guessing mainly reusable items. Yeah, I would say that the medical campus is lagging a little bit in this area. Um, so right now the eco to go isn't available um, on that campus. Um, recycling is pretty widely and they are doing um, uh, kitchen scrap composting. Um, but that's pretty much the scope at this point. And another chat question was about the um, coffee pods and what do you advise about that? And Mendy said that you can find reusable ones, um, but if you have any other insights. Yeah, I believe they actually have a resource developed for this from through the green all types of coffee pods out there. Um, they do have some that are compostable. They have um, some programs where you can request a, a bag, like a shipping box, and then send them back and they'll deconstruct them. But if it's a, um, <clears throat> a number one or a number five um, pod and you're, you're game for kind of peeling up off the lid and emptying out the grounds, then you can recycle that, that um, remaining part of plastic. But you definitely wouldn't want to recycle it as a whole in the single stream.
Um, on that note, Erin asked earlier, what does single stream mean and what are other types of uh, systems? Great question. So single stream um, literally means one stream of recyclables. So it's putting, not putting everything, including trash, but putting all of the recyclables into um, one container that is then sorted at a, a material recovering facility. Um, there are other um, like dual stream or multiple stream systems. Um, for example, some, some universities or some uh, other entities will separate paper products from containers um, and that increases the value of the paper product and, um, and also the value of the containers. Um, and then in some, like a lot of rural communities will actually have um, participants sort everything out. So you keep your aluminum separate, you keep your paper separate, um, you keep your plastic separate. And that's going to increase the value of each of those items even more because you don't have to spend um, the labor and the and have the mechanized um, process of sorting those things out. And they're also not getting cross contaminated um, in the meantime. Um, Susan is asking, are you familiar with composting with worms and what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, worm composting is a real thing. It's great. Um, you can have, you know, a thousand little pets if you want. Um, and you can do it, um, you know, if you have a basement or under your, your kitchen sink, if you have a spot for it. Um, there's a, a local um, business that actually sells kits for um, composting worms. Um, and they can kind of help you figure out how many worms you need based on the amount of food that you're um, um, creating food waste that you're creating on a regular basis. Um, so um, I say, you know, check it out. It's definitely fun. And it's amazing how much compost reduces, whether you're doing a backyard compost um, or you're doing the worms, um, it really breaks down into virtually nothing. Um, it's pretty amazing. And I'd be happy to talk more about it later if you'd like. Um, um, another really good question about data. How can we access data uh, regarding what issues, ways that you shared in the presentation? Yeah, um, if you want to reach out to me after the presentation, I'd be happy to provide, like, understand what specific data you want and then share, share with you what we have. Um, we do have more current data than what I had in the presentation. Um, and we have, we track more streams as well than what I had in the presentation. So um, there's a fair amount of data and um, I'd be happy to share it. I don't think there are any other questions in the chat, but uh, folks, feel free to unmute yourself and just jump in if you have any questions. All right, well, um, feel free to marinate that on, but in the absence of no questions, um, if you could give a thumbs up um, through the, um, the reactions tool, if you learned something new today. Okay. All right. Hey, Cassie, I have a question. This is patience. Um, <clears throat> so I do have some friends who are really into um, the movement towards zero waste. And a lot of us chat about how to carry around our own utensils, our own drinking cups, our own coffee mugs, our own takeout dishes. Do you have tips for making that easier so you're not carrying around a backpack full of, <laughs> you know, carrying 10 pounds of, of home supplies? Sure, sure. Um, so, I mean, you can always kind of prioritize. You could try it with everything and then see which items you use the most. Um, if, um, if you have um, like a, a bike bag or if you drive and, and want to like have um, something for leftovers from a restaurant in your car, um, <clears throat> that could be an option. I do have a couple sets of reusables. So um, <clears throat> something I can carry in my backpack, um, something that I, I can grab quickly if I'm kind of leaving the house and placing things. And then also, um, like for a beverage container, I would suggest trying one that is can be kind of either water or coffee or, you know, like use a couple of different 
um, uses. <coughs> um, does anybody else have any any tips on making that a little bit easier? Um, I'm an avid camper and I found that uh, places like REI or even the, the Walmart camping aisle often has some really good resources as far as lightweight and compact dishware for carrying around in your purse. Yeah. I did just buy a collapsible Top silicone. Double as the yeah. kind of, yeah, for sure. A silicone cup, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there are a question in the chat about how do we procure this bamboo utensil. So I put the link for uh, the form because it's free for all WashU students until October 8th. And um, anyone can also buy them for $8 on our website. But Cassie, I heard you mention something about giving it for free for attendees of this presentation. You're still kind of cutting up. So can, can you confirm? Firm. If you, if you can put one of those to use, um, we would be happy to, um, to give those to you. Um, we can send it via campus mail. Um, and you, you're welcome to fill out that form. Um, Thursday afternoon to um, close out your, your day by um, learning a little bit more about waste. Really appreciate it. Um, and um, we will follow up with a list of um, quick links. So if you have any follow-up questions, um, you, you're welcome to respond to that or to reach out to us directly. Um, so thank you so much. And Thanks everyone. Feel free to join the other sessions as well. It'll be the same time next week. Thank you. Bye.